Hi there and welcome to Naturally Recovering Autism. I am your host, Karen Thomas, and I wanna thank you so much for being here and being a proactive parent and getting the resources that you need to let your child live their most fulfilling and independent life possible. When my own son was diagnosed with autism, I was told to drug him and try behavioral therapies and there was nothing else that we could do for him but manage his symptoms the rest of his life. But I didn't wanna do that. Fortunately, my background in craniosacral therapy of now 30 years, let me know that the brain can and does heal, but I didn't know that much about autism. What I did know is that I didn't want to just mask the symptoms with dangerous drugs. I wanted to find the causes and work with them naturally. And fast forward, it took me a decade and a lot of time and effort, but today my son is no longer diagnosable with autism after being told it could not happen. So I'm here to share with you valuable resources to, to save you the time and some of the expense that I had to spend to figure it out and to help you let your child lead to their best results possible. Every child's level of recovery is different, but we know that children who couldn't sleep through the night are sleeping now through the night and happily. Their immune systems are now strong where they were once sick all the time. Children who were nonverbal and their parents were told they could never speak are now speaking. Children who were getting D's and F's in school are getting A's and B's. And those that were so anxious all the time and couldn't sit still and, and were uncomfortable in their own bodies are now calm and happy and relaxed. And they're leading fulfilling and independent lives with friends. This is what we want for our kids. So I'm here to share the resources with you so that you can get the best results for your child the best possible. And you can start that right now with my free download of this top seven foods to eliminate beginning today of the top foods that are the most inflammatory and toxic that are contributing to those physical and behavioral symptoms of autism that your child is having. They're making his life uncomfortable. So you can get that right now at naturallyrecoveringautism.com forward slash seven foods and feel free to share that with anybody you know who would be interested. And I will also link to it in today's show notes. There's of course a lot more than diet, but this is something you could start doing today that will begin to reduce those symptoms. And I'm happy to share everything I can with you. So right now, let's dive into today's episode. Hi there and welcome. Today's episode is going to be something that is important for all people and children with autism are definitely affected. Sometimes we don't really realize that our blood sugar is fluctuating as much as it is. And because it can be affecting things at a much deeper level with insulin, then it can move into diabetes if we're not careful. So I want to talk a little bit today about diabetes triggers and some prevention preventative measures as well. And hopefully last the my last episode you saw number 157 was on ways to help counteract sugar in the body, things that you can eat, like adding protein in with, you know, if you're eating chocolate, a piece of chocolate, add a piece, add some almonds with it, things like that, so that you can help to balance the blood sugar rather than shooting things straight in. Uh, for instance, if you drink juice, you are really affecting your blood sugar greatly because it is it doesn't have any fiber or other things to really slow down that process of it getting absorbed into the bloodstream. We want to avoid juice anyway because of the sugars involved, but I just wanted to give that as a really good example. So really, of course, there are a lot of physical problems that can accompany autism. And one disorder that affects so many children today is diabetes. It's important to recognize the signs of it, know the triggers, and then really understand what you can do to, pre to prevent it from happening to your child. Because there are two types of diabetes. There is type one and type two. So type two diabetes is acquired insulin and leptin resistance and is directly re related to poor diet, such as one that's really high in processed foods and refined sugars, Combined with combining that with a lack of exercise that doesn't burn it off out of your system can make it even harder on your system. If you're lucky, you can balance type two diabetes with the proper diet and exercise with no need for insulin injections. It is able to be reversed for many people through diet, but it's also good to know to help prevent it from coming on in the first place by having a healthy diet. Type one diabetes is much more severe. 
It's more of an autoimmune disease caused by the immune system attacking the pancreatic cells that produce insulin. People with type one diabetes need injections of insulin to prevent actually death. It can be fatal for them. It can be hereditary and its onset can be triggered by a lot of things. Really common triggers, one of them that's lesser known is cow's milk. Cow's milk has a lot of just natural sugars in it anyway, but I'm going to link to a study here that I have in the show notes that talks about how drinking cow's milk, especially before the age of two, is known to be a cause of juvenile diabetes. And the milk proteins are also quite similar to the proteins made by the pancreas, which then causes the body to attack its own insulin cells. And again, that I will link to this study behind this uh, on the show notes, because I think this is really important to understand the severity of that. And a lot of people, you know, it's, it's lesser known, but many people are feeding their children milk, thinking it's a healthy food and it's very inflammatory. It creates opiates in the body. Yes, opiates like the drug, uh, which gluten also does as well, the protein in wheat. They're inflammatory. They weaken the lining of the intestinal tract and they create opiates in the body. So your child becomes actually sort of addicted to that. So they're really, really important to avoid anyway. And of course, if you haven't gotten my free food guide, please do it. It's the top seven foods to avoid um, to help reduce your child's symptoms of autism and also for overall better health. I'll link to it in the show notes, but just to give it to you real quick, it's naturallyrecoveringautism.com forward slash seven foods. And that's just the number seven and foods with no space in between. Vaccinations are another trigger of diabetes. According to Dr. Donald Miller, uh, he's an, an MD, there have been a, there's been a 17 fold increase in type one diabetes from one in 71 hundred children in the 1950s to one in 400. And this correlates with the increase in the vaccination schedule. Also virus exposure can also be a trigger. Monosodium glutamate, MSG, it is an excitotoxin. It excites the brain cells to death. It's known to cause a lot of anger issues in children. And it's very, very commonly found in Many foods, especially processed foods, they even put it in processed deli meats. So really watch watch that and read your labels. You don't want to be feeding grains to infants either. Uh, it's often the first food offered to babies. You know, we'll give them some um, organic rice mixed with a little breast milk or, or hopefully not actual real cow's milk. So grains are often processed. They contain allergens. They feed the bad bacteria in the gut, including your baby's gut. And they're really hard actually on the brain. And there are a lot of uh, books out and a lot of research around that one as well too. Know that low levels of vitamin D are also a trigger. About 70% of children in the US have low vitamin D levels. So supplementing with vitamin D3 is really important. And especially in the winter months when we're getting less sun, because the sun converting converting to vitamin D through our skin is one of the ways that we get more in the summertime when we have short sleeves on or short pants on and our, we have more skin exposure. Just your face alone is not nearly enough. And it's really important to know that vitamin D3 is the most highly absorbable form of vitamin D. And as a supplement, it is the best flu and viral and bacterial fighter that you can take. So great, great for uh, for flu prevention and virus, uh, helping with viruses as well. And the brain really needs vitamin D too. Uh, of course, another trigger I already mentioned is an example as an example of poor diet is too many simple sugars, which cause the pancreas to become stressed to the point of exhaustion. So when it happens, it stops producing insulin and insulin injections become necessary. Um, again, some more prevention assistance would be to take vitamin D3 supplements. Again, vitamin D3 is really important to be the most bioabsorbable form. 
And Dr. Michael Hollick has found that children who received vitamin D3 supplements from the age of one and on had an 80% decreased risk of de developing type one diabetes. We already mentioned avoiding cow's milk and I sideways with that earlier mentioned avoiding gluten. Gluten allergies are commonly, re are commonly related to type one diabetes as well. And I've done an entire uh, podcast on gluten and the brain, and I will link to that in the show notes as well. It is far more dangerous than we even realize. And it's the crops are sprayed with glyphosate, which is another interview I've done with Dr. Stephanie Seneff, who is an MIT professor that it talks about the dangerous uh, chemical that's basically Roundup weed killer sprayed on our crops, especially wheat crops today, and how dangerous it can be. So make sure you're not spraying that in or around your yard as well. Uh, use caution, be fully educated about vaccinations. Uh, breastfeeding is always the best choice when weaning and beyond a diet of healthy, whole, natural foods grown organically are best. It's best to really stay away from the standard American diet of sodas and chips and processed foods, including processed carbohydrates, because even though it might be gluten-free, it doesn't mean it's good for you. Those processed foods, actually those processed carbohydrates specifically, turn to sugars in the body. So they actually do affect our blood sugar. We want to eat things that are more, more keto related. Like if you're going to use an almond, almond flour or coconut flour are good substitutes in any recipe, really a one-to-one -one ratio uh, for um, any recipe that calls for wheat flour, you could just use coconut flour. I'll also, I'll, we noted that all of these um, other things that aren't organic are sprayed with these prep pesticides, many animal, uh, animal and fish contents are given antibiotics and hormones and fed grains. These things can also contain mold, which can be really, really detrimental. Again, another symptom of, of uh, that relates to uh, autism, where it gives an inability to think clearly. It gives a, um, where people think that they have a lower IQ when they don't, but it's just affecting the brain so much. Those Mold biotoxins are really detrimental to the system. Fructose also promotes insulin resistance and fat storage. This can be dangerous to your health. So to be sure to avoid foods high in fructose. Don't use high fructose corn syrup, of course, ever. Uh, it's really dangerous uh, for the blood sugar because it's even much, much sweeter than sugar. You want to do eat a diet, including a protein source, which helps to balance the blood sugar along with a good fat, such as extra virgin olive oil or coconut oil. So that's important too. And you do want to avoid the bad fats like vegetable oils, canola oil, safflower, all of these other oils that actually deplete the good oils in our body. So that's important to remember too. And I have done a an episode on the good fats versus the bad fats as well. And I'll link to that in the show notes for you too. Uh, so again, there are many reasons why blood sugar can become imbalanced and what you can do to help it to stay under control. And my last episode, in, I mentioned number 157, what were tips to improve holiday eating and behavior. So you can see again, how much the, the foods affect our child's behavior, which is really important to know because sometimes we don't really realize that they might be having a histamine reaction, uh, an allergic reaction, or their blood sugar might be really just all of a sudden going out of whack from something they ate. They might be having, you know, some type of a, you know, a pesticide reaction because our kids are really sensitive. And their livers are usually already congested, which is the organ of detoxification. And it can't take more. It can't, it's already too taxed. So anything, you know, makes our sensitive kids really can be pushed over the line. So we want to be careful and understand that something has triggered them when all of a sudden their behaviors change for the worse. You have to know that it's, they're not just trying to act out. There's usually some form of a trigger. So do be aware of that. 
I've done episodes also on uh, things that are affecting their sleep, like candida induced hypoglycemia, where the blood sugar, the candida or yeast in their gut is actually using up all of the glucose in their body and their brain. And the brain is desperate for some glucose. So it'll wake you up in the middle of the night. Um, I've done an episode on blood sugar in the brain, hypoglycemia and low blood sugar, um, and then some healthier holiday eating strategies. So I will link to all of these things in the show notes for you so that you can uh, go listen to the other ones that relate to this as well, because it, it really all comes full circle and it's important to know all of this information uh, to be well educated and to really help yourself as well as your child but understanding why your child might be behaving the way that they are and making sure that you're practicing preventative measures. Again, please get my free food guide to the top seven foods to avoid for calmer behaviors and clearer thinking, improved sleep, and really a much more peaceful life. The link again is naturallyrecoveringautism.com forward slash seven foods. I hope this has been helpful for you. I'm truly here to help you, uh, give you resources that can help you to help your child live a better and higher quality of life and, uh, and for your own health as well and support you on this journey. Uh, thank you for being here so much and enjoy your day. I will see you soon.